Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening everyone, good evening Indonesia, and Om Swastiastu. Welcome to our Institute of Global Professionals free webinar. Thanks for joining with us in this wonderful evening and stay with us till the end. The Honorable Madam Dr. Selfie Pangua as the first keynote speaker. The Honorable Mr. Dr. Lakbiran Roni as the second keynote speaker. The Honorable Alof Kamitis Institute Global Professionals. And my beloved ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let us pray and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his grace and mercy. We can join together and let us greet and pray to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had brought us to the path of light. I am Windy Puspita Sari Suparto from Makassar, South Sulawesi, Indonesia, as the host webinar today and a member of Institute Global Professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, as we know that IGP or Institute Global Professional is an educational institution's program to provide social work. We believe that Institute Global Professional serves students community resource providing holistic social work and education for create a proficient generations. We expect that you all getting a little bit benefit in a personal and professional life. So, ladies and gentlemen, please like, share, and comment this page. And please like, share, and subscribe YouTube channel Institute Global Professional because your attachment encourage us to do better and best service to our lovely audience. So, ladies and gentlemen, join us for the international webinar 222 entitled Teaching English as a Foreign Language and Assessment Part 3 with two keynote speakers from Indonesia, namely Madam Dr. Selfie Pangua and Mr. Dr. Lakbiran Roni. Well, for the first speaker is Madam Dr. Selfie Pangua. So let me introduce herself. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam uh, Dr. Selfie Pangua, uh, he has done to research and community research service experiences 2012 that entitled Handicaps Encounter in Learning Vocabulary by the eight-year students of SLTP Negri Tiga Sesean. And then he has done to uh, 2013 entitled Improving Speaking Ability of the Third Semester Students of English Department of FKIP Uki Toraja through paraphrasing. And then she has done 2017 entitled The Effectiveness of Program Anak Asu by the English Department Students of FKIP Uki Toraja. And the last 2017 he has done to a research entitled Developing Professional Competence Training Material for the High School EFL Teachers in Toraja, Indonesia. Wow, so we invite Madam Dr. Selfie Pangua. Hello, Madam. Hello, Madam. Hello, no. Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome 
to the Alfi Pangua. Hello, madam. Can you hear me? Hello, madam. Any problem? Hello, madam. Time is your presentation. Hello. Okay, sorry for the mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, let's call her again. Hello, madam. Hello, any problem? Hello, madam. Are you there? Hello, hello, madam. <laughs> Where are you, madam? Hello, madam. Are you there? Yoo <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think there is a uh, something problem for uh, connected. So we still waiting for you, madam. Okay, there is a problem. Uh, 
Halo madam. <laughs> Yuhu. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I remind you, please like, share, uh, and comment this page, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe YouTube channel Institute Global Professionals, because your attachment encourage us to do better and a best service to our lovely audience. So, we're still waiting for you, madam. Hello, madam. Are you there? Sir Ronnie, please inform ma'am uh, ma Selvi please, while yes, uh, she need to open her cam and mic while joining. Please inform her. She is trying to join, but I think uh, without mic and cam. So please inform her to join with Mike and Kim. Okay, okay, sir. We'll wait for five minutes. After that, if not, then, uh, sorry, we'll wait more than two or three minutes. If she joined, then okay. Otherwise, we'll move for the second speaker. Hello, ma'am. Where are you? Hello, Ma'am Wendy. Hello, Ma'am Wendy. Please invite our second speaker, Sir Ronnie, as a uh, speaker right now. If Ma'am Selby will join, then she will cover the second part. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry for uh, the mistakes tonight. Well, we have a move. Now, uh, we invite uh, Mr. Dr. Labiran Roni as the first keynote speaker. 
So, we invite Mr. Dr. Labiran Roni. Hello, Mr. Hello. Can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. I can hear huh? you. Are you okay. ready? Oh. Ibu, Ibu Selvi, are you ready, Ibu Selvi? Hello. Hello. Okay, so okay. Ibu Selvi already. So maybe it's are you Ibu ready, Mama? Okay. Okay, see. <laughs> also, okay, you didn't so, start. Okay, 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 okay. So, I'm so sorry, maybe. Tonight, there is uh, something problem for connections, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, we invite Madam Dr. Selfie Pangua. Time is yours, Madam. Thank you so much. And good evening for Indonesia time. I don't know about other countries, but it is a great pleasure for me. Oop. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I can hear you. Is it clear? Okay. Thank you so much. So, Good luck, madam. <laughs> okay. So this is a great pleasure to be here in this special occasion. Um, so Miss Windy Puspitasari just introduced me, even though at the first time uh, I have I had a problem uh, with the video and also the sound of my laptop. So I'm so sorry about that. So I will start my presentation and I'm going to share. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a moment, please. I'm going to open my PowerPoint presentation. Wait a moment, please. Okay, so can you see my screen? And Hello? is it clear, PowerPoint? Yeah. Can you see my PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Well, so thank you so much. So uh, because the topic about uh, teaching English as a foreign language and assessment and the topic of my presentation today, how people learn and how people teach languages. So this is the best practice during um, post-pandemic COVID-19 time at English Department of Okitoraja. So I will start with the icebreaker. I would like to ask you, um, as the participants of this webinar, how many languages can you speak and understand? Maybe you can speak English, you can speak your uh, your mother tongue, your language at your country. And how did you get it? And do you know the process of getting the language? And did you get it concisely or subconsciously? Well, so when we talk about get the language, then we come to the theory that is acquisitions versus learning. Some people say that we acquire the language, but some people say that we're learning the language. So what about you? Was your language or your English acquired or learned? Well, so the answer, only you knows the answer. So when we talk about language acquisition, that means that we exposure to the language. We heard the language all the time, especially people talk to us. And also when we talk about language acquisitions, that means we have opportunities to use the language as much as, much as and as, as often as possible. So 
we can say that language acquisition is a subconscious process. Language acquisition is a subconscious process similar to that by which children acquire their first language, um, as stated by Kramina in 2000 in uh, her articles. But in language acquisition, age seems to be an important factor. According to the expert that uh, children often acquire and also forget the language easily. That is because they get such a lot of exposure to them and partly because of their developmental stages and the lives they are leading. While teenagers and adults don't seem to acquire languages so automatically, however, adults and teenagers can be the efficient learners, partly because their circumstances and the development stages are different. Okay, so what about language learning? Language learning is something we do concisely. We make a systematic and scientific concepts and process on that. So we can use learned language to check or monitor our conversation or our writing, but this monitor may stop us being fluent because we are worrying about whether we are speaking correctly. And this is about the hypothesis of Russians. I believe that most of the language learner uh, know about the hypothesis of Russians. Why? Sometimes uh, the language rules or grammar that we study um, it becomes monitor for us. Sometimes when we try to speak in English, we always remember, we think of the rules and we know and then make corrections. So that's why uh, Harmer said that, a uh, Russian said that um, when we learn language, it becomes monitor for us. So language learning is the, pro is the product of either formal learning situation or a self-study program. Well, so why does the difference between acquisitions and learning matter? All over the world, students lang uh, learn languages. We study language in the classroom. They are taught grammar, functions, and vocabulary. Is that wrong to do that? Experts say that perhaps we should go to uh, we should only give students a lot of exposure to the language together with the opportunities to use it just as we do with children. Just like when we, uh, when we get our mother tongue from, our, from mother or people around us. So according to the experts, learning a language, um, it's a kind of formal uh, process but acquiring a language, it is just uh, we have exposure, we exposure to the language and we have opportunity to use that language. Well, so this is the explanation of Stephen Krushen's hypothesis, uh, especially the input hypothesis, or some people say it, comprehensible input. Well, so Krushen suggested that people acquire language if they get comprehensible input. What does it mean, comprehensible input? Um, Krushen explained that um, learners who study language should uh, study one level above their level. So it is said that N plus one. So N is student's level and plus one means one level above the level of the learner. So maybe most of the cases in Indonesia or other countries that learn English as a foreign language, sometimes uh, students say that English is really a difficult subject for them. Maybe because most of the teacher teach them not one level above them or maybe two, level, two levels above their level. So of course, it will be very difficult for us 
where Krushen stated that it should be one level above their level. So students are exposed to language that is just above their own level, but which they more or less understand. So giving learners plenty of this kind of input helps them acquire language naturally rather than learn it concisely. So massive, in, massive input of uh, comprehensible input is the key to the language acquisitions. Input can be through listening and reading. So once again, input can be through listening and reading. The more the students listening, the more the students reading, the more they get comprehensible input that will enable them to speak and to um, explain their ideas and opinions in English orally or um, in written form. So, um, is exposure to comprehensible input itself enough? So, there has to be an element of concise attention to the actual language that is being used in the input. So when we get the comprehensible input, then there should be element of concise attention. That means we need to learn the language. Especially important for learners who have reached or gone uh, through puberty like teenagers and adults. So um, which one is best? Um, language uh, acquisitions or language learning? Um, perhaps the best way to get a new language like English so it would be to go and live in a country where the language is spoken. So for example, you would like to improve your English, perhaps we can go to America or we can go to England or we can go to Australia. We can live there for maybe three months and then we can acquire the language. However, not all the learners have the same opportunity to go to the abroad or to go to the uh, country that use English as, um, as their international language. So there would be both exposure to the language and opportunities to use it if we have opportunity to go to a country that use uh, English. But would that be enough for children and adults? Do we all have opportunity to go to live in America or Australia and other countries? I think that not all people have the same opportunities. So, um, yes. Uh, in fact, that most people learn language in classrooms. That is the fact that most people learn English in classroom. Not, uh, they don't have the same opportunity to go to um, English or country that use English. So um, most educational believe that children are not ready to learn language, like uh, study the grammar, yes, the structures. Why? Because of their age. Then acquisition-like activities may be the best for children. So most language learning lessons today include a mixture of activities and some more focused on acquisitions and some more focused on learning. Many teaching methods have focused more on learning than acquisition, but some teaching methods have concentrated more on acquisitions than learning. Okay, so uh, here uh, there is a case study. This is the real uh, learners of English as a foreign language. So you know all about Fernando. Fernando Torres, a football from Spain who has played in the UK. He said that he learned English by listening to the radio a lot. And while he was doing it, he is trying to concentrate on what he was hearing. So he also looked at a big advertisement at the side of the road and try to see or notice what they said and what the meaning was. So when he had noticed the words in the advertisement or concentrated on the words 
so that he could recognize them again. Then he could learn them. In other words, he had exposure to the language, but then he thought concisely about what he was seeing and hearing. In this case, there is a combination between uh, language acquisitions and language learning. Fernando Torres got English or learned English. Um, he acquired the language, but also he studied the language concisely. So that means combination of language acquisitions and language learning. And now I'm going to explain about the best practice of language acquisitions and language learning at English Department of Okitoraja during and post-pandemic COVID-19 time. So as the pandemic uh, hit all the world, so dramatic changes in people's habits and lifestyles, lifestyles across the broad uh, chains, and of course in education system. So start in March in 2002, teaching and learning process at English Department of Okitoraja totally changed. We should do online learning. And at the time, um, I thought um, speaking for academic purposes. Now it changed to become listening and speaking for academic purposes. So at the time, um, during, during the pandemic time, I've been implementing uh comprehensible input by giving um assignment of listening to the uh, to the students by listening to the native speaker um i always downloaded some uh, material from youtube um that of course uh, sp spoken by native speaker so um i think that this become comprehensible input for the students. So students are given time for a week to do the assignment. So they have to listen uh, for the native speaker for many, many times at home. Uh, during the week, they have to listen to the native speaker. And then they have to understand, they learn the pronunciation. Uh, after that, they have to retell the video. They make their own video and then they upload that video on their YouTube channel. So by doing that, students are given uh, time uh, to exposure to the language. And also uh, they were given opportunity to use that language. So this is a combination between language acquisitions and language learning. And then they have to upload their own video, they retell the video, and of course, before they upload that video in their YouTube channel, they have to prepare it well. So um, I see the result of this assignment. Most of the students are aware trying to give their best performance. And yes, so in my point of view, this is a kind of combination between uh, language acquisitions and um, language learning. So this is one of the example that the task that I uh, gave to my students at the time. And I think I'm going to show you one of the video of my students. I don't know if I can share the video. Can you see my, can you see the video? I'm sorry. Oh. Hello, welcome back to my channel. So I hope that you are in the good condition. You are not bored to stay at home. Like in my video before, never forget to introduce myself first. I am Veronica Sampemangali. I am a student of Christian University of Indonesia, Karaja. My major is English Department, and I am the first semester. I, my work number is 218 
So this video is one of a segment of speaking for academic purpose a subject by Dr. Sophie Pangua MPD. So beautiful, right? <laughs> so in that video, I will give arguments about COVID-19. But before we continue, don't forget to... <laughs> So guys, I think coronavirus is the word that is familiar to us to hear. It is often, even we always hear the impact that causes it. <clears throat> Severe acute respiratory syndrome, better known as coronavirus or COVID-19, is a new type of coronavirus that is transmitted to humans, although more often affect the elderly. This virus can actually affect Okay, so one another uh, video of the students I will show you. Provinces oh, no, to respiratory system. Just the same. Okay, so um, this is one of the uh, I, the study that I have done. Um, I was trying to implement language acquisitions and language learning through blended learning model during the post-pandemic COVID-19. And here are the several good opportunities, opportunities obtained by the lecture of speaking skill course during the new normal era post-pandemic COVID-19 time as follows. Uh, the lecturer reported that the material used was authentic material, which was mostly taken from YouTube channel, as I explained previously that I try to give opportunity to students to exposure to the language and then uh, also give them opportunities to use that language. So uh, the, the materials that I downloaded from YouTube channel, of course, by the native speaker. So students have opportunity to exposure to the language and use that language. Um, they also reported that it has increased students' performance and also their self-confidence in speaking. Also, students gain recognition from viewers and subscribers because they have to upload it, their assignment uh, to their YouTube channel. So the more people like and subscribe and views their videos, that means they get some feedback from uh, viewers. And also students and lecturers are becoming more creative and innovative. As you know that in this uh, pandemic time, um, learners and teachers, lecturers uh, should uh, know how to use the uh, IT. And also the flexible learning time and not limited uh, by time and space. So because we have to implement uh, online learning, that means students can learn everywhere, anywhere. Next, um, it is also uh, find that students' vocabulary increases and also increasing knowledge of digital literacy, both lecturers and students. Well, so now the question is, which one is best? So there is no the best one. So the combination between language assessment and language learning is the best. No one has yet come perfect language learning method. Different students learn differently and the teaching methods often change as society itself changes. According to Harmer, he suggested that uh, there are four methods which are either widely used or talk about a lot and still have influence in modern teaching practice, uh, namely grammar translation method, audio lingual methodology, and the communicative approach or communicative language teaching, and the last is task-based learning. 
I will not explain about that uh, those methods uh, here because I believe that most of you uh, know well about uh, these methods. But I would like to explain that methods one and two, um, grammar translation and audio lingual methodology are more learning based, while method number three and four, that is the communicative approach and task based learning, are significantly more acquisition like. So teacher can combine um, all the methods all these methods or maybe can use another methods but the important thing that teachers should consider that they have to try to combine between language acquisitions and language learning in order to help the learners to study the language concisely or acquire the language in their subconscious subconsciously so the conclusion, so how people learn languages? The first, we have to consider about age. Age is important factor in language acquisitions and learning. Children often acquire or forget the language easily, but teenagers and adults don't seem to acquire language so automatically, but they can be efficient learners. And acquisitions is a subconscious process while learning is a concise process. So the best way to learn language is to combine them, where there is a time of acquiring as well as learning the language. How people teach the languages? No one perfect language learning method because different students learn differently. And the methods change as people and the world always changes. Learning and teaching in the post-pandemic COVID-19. So students and teachers should adapt and implement the modern IT in their teaching and learning process, especially um, try to combine, uh, use the, the um, IP, but remember how to help the learners to acquire the language as well as learning the language. So I think this is the end of my presentation. This is the reference of my uh, presentation today. Um, if you have some questions, you may ask, you may ask me, and I think, thank you very much for your attention and, uh, good evening. Wow. Thank you so much, madam, for your excellent presentations tonight and giving us your valuable time. So amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after her speech, please say thanks uh, giving us uh, thank you so much and presentations. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the second keynote speaker, Mr. Dr. Roni Labiran. Well, let me introduce himself. <clears throat> Okay, Mr. Dr. Roni Labiran, MPD, he finished his graduate and a postgraduate program at State University of Makassar in Indonesia. He is an English lecturer at English Education Department at Toraja Christian University of Indonesia, or we can call Uki Toraja, Indonesia. He has also published research papers in national and international publications program in North, Northern Illinois University in United States. His interests include speaking and teaching English foreign language or people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we invite Dr. Ronnie Labiran. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hello, uh, Ms. Uh, Wendy. Thank you very much for invite me, okay, inviting me. Okay, okay, okay sir. Uh, it's time for your presentation tonight and good luck. Thank you. Uh, so can you help me please to show share screen my presentation, please? Because I have a trouble my uh, laptop. 
Oke, okay, oke, okay, wait, sir. Thank you. Right, so thank you very much for all of the uh, participants for this uh, international conference. Uh, good evenings in uh, Indonesian times. So I try to explain about my topic uh, with the title a model of teaching English practice in, in, in Toraja Christian University of Indonesia. All right, so we continue to uh, the introduction, please. Right, um, this is really important that uh, English, uh, teaching English, especially for speaking here, uh, we have how to try to teach English uh, speaking in the classroom so the student can understand about uh, English. Uh, therefore, we have to try to teaching English based on student needs. Um, therefore, the student have an encourage or motivation to learn English. So that we don't have to teaching English based on uh, teacher needs, but we have to try to know that the student have, uh, have to know how to speak in English. And especially for in the nowadays, a student should know how to speak in English. But this is really hard for, especially for the second, uh, uh, especially for the student who learn English, so non-native speaker, such as in, in Asia or in Indonesia, the, the students are really hard to uh, learn English because um, they have to know uh, many languages. They, they have to try to um, translate so many languages, therefore they can uh, get it the point before, um, before teaching, uh, before practice about uh, English and especially in uh, yeah, in in Toraja, um, student learn uh, three languages, namely Indonesian, Torajanese, and English. There's we have to try to collaborate the uh, three languages here before teaching uh, teaching here. But as a good teacher, they have to try to know how to uh, concentrate to use one language also, namely English. Because um, if we have to try to use many languages, that's making it confused for students. So which one they have to get it. Therefore, I try to remind, especially for English teacher or the lecturer who teach English, they have to try to speak in English full in English, even though the student don't understand about uh, what does mean about the English, but they have to try to use the body language uh, in teaching English. And the lecturer should know student ability will be for teaching, especially uh, they have to make a uh, uh, um, like in a small test, so uh, how deep is the student can understand about an English. So we have to try to know about the student before teaching English. So we don't have to try to teach him directly, but we make sure that the student can understand about an English here. Uh, we have to be suitable model, but uh, based on student needs. Uh, creative teaching in teaching speaking influence a student speaking ability. It's a really important for a, a student that the that student have a motivation if the teacher teaching English based on the student needs and um, have a many creativity in teaching a learning process. And according to Leo 2013, that teacher who uh, who are not a creative tend become a self of book. Yes, in reality, we need a book to uh, for teaching in the classroom, but we don't try to uh, teach everything is a book, everything is a book. That's an important one. We have to know that uh, we have to look for the good strategy in teaching English, especially for the uh, non-native speaker. There's a, a student who learned English as a foreign language. This is really hard for the student. They have to try to uh, practice about it, English, about, uh, especially for um, pronunciation and so on. Um, and the next, the lecture, the lecture should be good performance. Um, good performance here, that means that teacher have to be a good uh, uh, model in teaching English. 
um, they have to know how to teach English and look for uh, interesting material that the student want to try to uh, teaching uh, in English. Uh, model in teaching speaking influenced by the teacher before a behavior and attitude is really important also because uh, behavior and attitude kind uh, of influence student ability in teaching uh, uh, in learning process one we do not try to uh, teaching cognitive only but we have to pay attention also about the student uh, behavior and attitude how 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 to influence the student therefore the student have a high motivation to learn English and especially for a uh, professional pedagogic and personal model for students that's important also because uh, uh, pedagogical uh, and it's a really important one because as a good teacher have to know about uh, student uh, teacher performance uh, how to teach English therefore the student can uh, and now how to speak in English and cognitive and affective skills should be improved in model teaching speaking also uh, this have to we have to uh, collaborate between a uh, cognitive affective uh, provisional and pedagogic one uh, this is a really important one because uh, as a good teacher when the teacher teaching about the material about an English they have to know about the pedagogic how to transfer the knowledge for the student, therefore the student can accept it, all of the material that presented in the classroom here. We do not try to teaching directly, but we have to know the student ability, student character, and etc. though before teaching in the classroom. And the component of model of teaching also, uh, the teacher have to try to know about the components such as um, how to uh, how to try to look for interesting model uh, in interesting uh, material how to um, create the material how to make a simple material and etc this is a, a simple one that we have to teaching step by step or we have to look for a uh, easy material we have to look for uh, ma the material that can be accepted by the student they have to try to look for the around in the classroom uh, the for the student have a, uh, the student uh, interested to learn English and the next the researcher decided to get a model that appropriate use for the lecturer in teaching speaking English department at university we know that um, a model uh, the teacher should be like an artist. No, uh, that means that the student have to copyright or the student now uh, can get it about the model. Uh, that's the model that I presented that the show about uh, to the, that the showed by the teacher in the classroom. Therefore, um, we have to be a good performer in in the classroom. Uh, therefore, the student uh, enjoy in learning English. And the next, uh, the objective of the study. This is a small research that I have done it here. That I have uh, how to teaching uh, English as a foreign language, especially for the foreign language, because uh, this I focused for foreign language. The student who learn English as speaking uh, in Indonesia. Uh, right, uh, we have to try to look for uh, two times, uh, uh, three or four uh, items here. The first time I have to try to describe about the uh, speaking model practice applied by the lecturer at Toraja Christian University in Indonesia. And then after that, we have to try to now uh, student perception to teaching speaking model. Uh, then after that, we have to try, I try to describe later about the classroom interaction which use in teaching speaking. And the next we, uh, for the fourth uh, point, uh, I have to uh, describe later about the impact of the teaching speaking model to the student achievement. Right, go on. And the next, um, the research instrument, I have to try to look for uh, uh, the data by using interview the student and the class 
classroom in observation documentation and teaching uh, speaking there's a uh, one uh, packet complete one i have to try to interview the student and look for a situation in the classroom that how deep is the student can understand about a model uh, that are uh, used by the lecturer in the classroom in teaching speaking here okay the next and the technique of a uh, data data analysis uh, try to use uh, a qualitative method i try to describe about whatever is it that uh, kind of happened in the classroom that i kind of get it that how the model can be accepted by the student who learn english as a foreign language in indonesia especially in Toraja. Okay, the next. And a finding and discussion here, the, the teacher speaking model practiced by the lecturer in the university, especially in Uki Toraja, Toraja Christian University. Um, I tried to get it at the next, uh, Miss. Try to slide you again. The next, right? Stop. Right. This is the finding. I'm um, sorry. Finding and discussion. I have to try to explain about this one. Uh, excuse me. It's just a back. Yeah, this one. Uh, I got it. Uh, the model in teaching English speaking illustration interaction and induction one. This uh, model is a really interesting for. Uh, student, especially the student who learn about speaking, uh, especially for student um, for the foreign language uh, here. The, the lecturer gave a contextual material, have to try to uh, give a contextual material such as a simple material or simple question that uh, do you love yourself or the other question. This, we have to try to make a simple question to give a feedback for the student before the student uh, can give a answer or explanation by using a simple question here. And then after that, the lecturer invite the one student to stimulate the other student to practice about the speaking here. Uh, after giving us a small question here, uh, I believe it that student can uh, give a little bit um, explanation, even though their English is uh, quite, um, it's not bad, it's not good, but they have to try to make it sure that they can practice uh, their English. And then the next, the lecturer gave the explanation by using question, um, do you your love, uh, give an explanation about this one the, uh, then they collaborate about um, about the student explanation and interaction one the lecturer invited and asked the student speaking about the topic the uh, after uh, the student given a small topic uh, the student uh, the, the lecturer asked the student to explain about the topic that I've already already mentioned it and the, the, the student responded to the lecturer also. Uh, this uh, have a little bit of uh, communication between teacher and like uh, teacher and a student. So don't worry about this one. We have to appre give an appreciation for the student, even though uh, when they try to speak in English, uh, their English is not complete or uh, perfect, but we have to try to give a um, uh how to say that uh appreciation for them and the student gave an explanation based on the question that given by the lecturer also uh this that means that a little by a little become a hill here uh even though this is a small one and then after that have to try to explain any more about the material that will be explained by the student the uh, induction one the student uh, pronounce well the word Yes, even though they have a, um, uh, such as a good 
uh, vocabulary in English. They have to try to how to say well in English here, how, how to pronounce well after things in English, especially how to pronounce well and how to pronounce about, uh, in sentence also. Therefore, we can get it the point when the student says something. And the lecturer help the students through clearly explanation here. Uh, uh, the lecturer have to try to make sure that the, the pronunciation uh, good and um, make sure that the student uh, continue to explain about their presentation speech in the classroom. Next. <clears throat> and the observation of teaching speaking applied by the, by the lecturer here, the, the lecturer explained the goal and the concept of the course topic. That means that before teaching, as a good teacher, as a good teacher, uh, this is a, a main point that the lecturer has to try to let now for the student the goal and the concept of the course topics there. Uh, therefore, the student can uh, um, uh, follow after things that are explained by the, the lecturer in the classroom here. This is a really important one that we don't have to try to teaching directly without the goal in teaching. So we have to get the goal that the student have to practice about this topic one, or the student have a small conversation with the friend and etc. And then after that, the student check the uh, attendance list here uh, and ask about the student condition and uh, keep smile to them. So many English teacher teaching without smile, uh, be careful one, because if uh, the model like a monster, this one, that means that the student do not like a teacher or the lecturer who teaching English uh, such a, uh, like a monster. We have to be a model one. We have to be a pop model. We have to be an, a good uh, artist in the classroom. Therefore, the student really uh, have a uh, good motivation to learn uh, English. And the next, they like give, con uh, give the contextual material. We do not try to look for uh, ex uh, difficult material, uh, such as when I'm teaching um, in Indonesian, I don't want to try to look for, um, uh, look for the material uh, in an America or in Bangladesh or in the Philippines or in Malaysia. They do not know that about this one, but I have to try to look for the topic that uh, really close with the student, such as in Toraja. Toraja is really um, uh, famous about uh, culture, uh, funeral ceremony. That's a really, really nice topic that um, explained by the student when I try to explain uh, the topic in the classroom there. And the lecturer invited one student to stimulate to other students. That's uh, really nice also. So a little bit of uh, student want to try to practice about the English uh, uh, start from vocabulary and then after that try to um, make a sentence and then after that try to uh, make an explanation. That is a really nice one if the student do like this one. And the lecturer gave explanation by using question. This is really important also because if the student gets stuck here, that means that the lecturer have to try to give a simple question to um, give a stimulation to the student to say something in English. Next. Okay, and the next, the lecturer in fact asks the student to speak about the topic one. Okay, uh, this is a nice one uh, because many students don't uh, they, they don't know how to say something in English. It's really hard uh, for especially who learn English in a rural urban area. They are not like uh, uh, the student who learn English uh, such as in Jakarta or Surabaya or in Java. Uh, the students are really easy to learn English because so many. Um, uh, good um, tool or uh, media there, but how about the student who learn English? There's a limited media in rural urban area. There's a really hard for the.
teacher or an English teacher there. And the lecturer set the student position in the classroom here. So we do not make a monotone situation in the classroom, but we have to try to change student sit in the in the classroom there. The next, um, the lecturer also explained her course topic through brainstorming. Uh, try to give them a brainstorming a little bit more so to help the student so for the student can understand easily about what we have to discuss in the classroom here the next um the lecture also help the student through clearly explanation so we do not try to uh, explain further more information uh, it's make a student not of and sleepy in the classroom but we have to uh, ask the student to say something in English or like a vocabulary on a simple sentence in English. And the next um, lecture also explains that just how to pronounce well. This is important one, what more? Because we have we we speak in English. That means that we have to know how to pronounce well in, in, in English. Uh, even though this is really hard for the students, uh, especially in Indonesia, uh, they have to try to a practice and a really hard for them how to be a good uh, speaker, how to be, how to pronounce well, such a, like a native speaker. Uh, but we have to push them to kind of do well other things. So I try to for the student how to try to speak English such, uh, like a, a native speaker. Uh, this is a really important one, even though uh, we do not know, we do not ask the student that, okay, let us try to practice in English and a lot of, um, um, learn English, uh, just as mentioned about the sentence in English. Uh, we do not try to uh, pronounce like um, a native speaker, but we have to make sure that we have to get it the point when we say something in English and we can get it the point when we can speak in English for uh, the other uh, people or the other students. That's the point ones. Um, we how to use the body language is in English also. The, and, and then after that, in the last um, ex, uh, classroom uh, uh, teaching learning process, we have a get a uh, reflection. How deep is the student can understand about the topic in the classroom? As a good teacher or the lecturer have to know how to um, get it this one like a reflection um the next uh, type of classroom interaction which use a teaching speaking at uki toraja this is a learner content and interaction learners content interaction that means that the learner uh explain about the interaction here uh the the, the, the try to say something about the topic by themselves and discuss together and give a correction, give explanation based on the content uh, that are given by the lecturer there. And the next also the learner uh, have a interaction uh, with the instructor, um, a small discussion with the lecturer there, and they have a little bit of motivation and a self-confidence to say something in English, even though there's a limited uh, uh, English and a pronunciation in English, but I try to push them to make sure that they are the best. And the learner and the, uh, try to interaction or have an interaction between their friends. This means that they have a small discussion with the student. There is interaction. This is a really complete one, content, uh, with the lecturer and also give interaction with the learners there. Okay, the next point. Um, this is the impact one, uh, speaking model student, speaking uh, uh, achievement there. That means that active responses. Um, that means that the student are really active, uh, give a response when the lecturer explains something in the classroom there. They try to say something in English and they try to make sure that they can say something in English there. Um, uh, this is um, a little bit an exercise for the student when the teacher asks the student, therefore the, the lecturer get, got it, the response from the student.
student and also student hard working there um, even though they have a me uh, limited medias in learning speaking in learning english but they have a high motivation uh, to practice about their english and I try to um, speak with themselves and this is really nice this is like in a crazy students but there's a really nice motivation that the can say something in English and a student have a high motivation also uh, such as this one practice by themselves and I try to uh, look for the friends and I invite invited the friends to say something in English and the student are good uh, self-confident also uh, uh, when the lecturer try to invite the student to come in the forward in the classroom and I said something in English uh, so the student enjoy about the English in the classroom. Thanks. Okay, and the conclusion that the model used in uh, UKI, the Torajan Christian University, is uh, illustration uh, e -R -I 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 here um, that I have already uh, illustration, interaction, and induction. Uh, I have already this, uh, explained about this one. Uh, the next and the type of classroom interaction. Uh, there are three points that we're going to get it there. Learner content interaction, learner instructor interaction, and learner learner interaction. And the student perception have a um, good a, a perception, a positive perception. Um, when we uh, discuss and when we try to uh, touch uh, uh, the student uh, by using a good model in teaching classroom, uh, we have to be a good model like an artist one. Uh, don't uh, I give a, given a point here that uh, especially for the teacher that please uh, don't uh, teach in the classroom if you don't have uh, any preparation. We have to we have to be a good a teacher and a good a prepara preparation before teaching. And the, the impact of the model here, uh, there's a really nice also, we have to try to get it impact here that instead the student have a active one and the student have a high motivation to learn English and the student um, try to practice about their English there by using a model I, 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 the, uh, the next, um, the reflection of model of teaching speaking here, teaching, we have to try to teaching uh, by using suitable material, you do not try to look for a difficult material, uh, especially for uh, the student who learned English as a foreign language, but when the student try but the student learn English as a native speaker um, at the first time, at the first language, I think so, that's not a problem. But um, especially for the student who learn English as a uh, foreign language, they have to try to look for a simple material and they try to look for a close material um, to uh, for teaching in the classroom and a simple, interesting material and set the goal uh, the material before teaching the the student have to try to know the goal and try uh, to let know the student what the goal that we have to teaching in the classroom and we have to make a good atmosphere in teaching speaking uh, process one. Um, sorry, uh, student perception. I have already uh, uh, explained that uh, the student have a posi positive perception toward the the model there. They really enjoy the teaching here. They really uh, have a high motivation to learn English uh, by using I I I model in teaching learning process. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Back to um, moderator. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for a great presentation tonight, sir, and giving us your valuable time because you have done two presentations, especially for teaching speaking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after her speech, him, 
his speech, please thanks giving his speech and presentations. That's amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I remind you, please like, share, and subscribe YouTube channel Institute Global Professionals because your attachment encourage us to do better and a best service to our lovely audience. So, for the next sessions, we open quiz competitions. Then I will uh, guide you, read uh, some quiz, uh, and I will give you information who is winner letter. And then we open Q and A or questions and answer, and the speakers will answer it. Let's start. Gentlemen, I would like to invite you to join these uh, quiz competitions. Let's join at slido.com. The code is IGP quiz. Let's start, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, now we open quiz competitions. Let's join at slido.com and the code is IGP quiz. Link in a comment box. Okay, let's start for the first questions. Elementary teachers need to have good written expressions while teaching yes or no. Okay, the truth is yes. Who is winner, everyone? Okay. The second question. Does teaching have more negative aspects than positive aspects? Yes or no? Ding, ding, ding. The truth is... Yes or no, everyone? Okay, the truth is no. Well, next question. Okay, the truth is no. Next question.
only two questions. Okay, well, uh, for the information, ladies and gentlemen, our sixth webinar series program, five parts, to the topic is Trends and Innovations in Mathematics Education, December 12 and 13, and then uh, 14, 15, and 16. Let's join everyone for the next webinar. Any else questions? Okay, well, next questions. Is oral expressions being able to communicate with others? Yes or no? Yes or no, everyone? Yes, the truth is yes. Well, next question. Do you only need a high school diploma to be elementary teacher? Yes or no? The truth is no. Okay, next question. Is, is getting no sleep while being an elementary school teacher a positive impact? Yes or no? Take your answer, everyone. Okay, the truth is no. Next for the six questions. <clears throat> okay, congratulations, May. Okay, for the next questions, a quality need to become a teacher is psychology. Yes or no? That is statement, everyone. Yes or no? Okay, the truth is yes. A quality need to become a teacher is psychology. Next questions. Wow, congratulations, Janice. Okay, next question here. Do you need to become administration certified to be a teacher? <coughs> Yes or no? Okay, the truth is yes. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, next question. Being a teacher means you can be mean to students when they are mean to you, yes or no? Okay, yes or no? Okay, the truth is no. Okay, next question. Brighton expressions means you can be able to understand what a person is saying. Yes or no? Okay, the truth is no. Well, the last question, everyone. Okay, 
this job involve coordinating, managing, and training others? Yes or no? And who is the first winner, everyone? Okay, the truth is yes. So, who is the winner, everyone? Let's see. Congratulations, all of. Ah, congratulations, Dennis, Shirley, Dufera, Naulat, and Nichelle, and Les, Julius. Congratulations, all of competitions winners. You have done. <clears throat> okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, for the next sessions, we open questions and answer. Please type your name, uh, country, and your questions for the first or second questions, and the speaker will answer it. Let's start. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we next session, uh, we open questions and answer. Please type your name, country, and your questions for, for the first or second question, uh, for the first or second speaker. Okay, well, the first questions from Mr. Ferus to Dr. Salfi Pangua. The question is, Sometimes we may not have a clear grammatical explanation. Instead, we may say that it doesn't feel right or accurate intuitively. Is that the subconscious mind that comes into play in such cases? So, I invite Madam Dr. Selfie to answer. Time is yours, Madam. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Mr. Varus Takabarov. Sorry if I spell wrong your name. Yes. <clears throat> thank you very much for your questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so when we talk about, of course, uh, in learning a language, of course, we learn uh, the grammatical. However, as I explained that for the uh, language acquisition, um, we are not focused on the grammar rules, but we uh, focus on exposure to the language and also have the opportunity to use that language. So I think if your question is that uh, sometimes we may not have a clear grammatical explanation, but we say um, intuitively so i think that is the subconscious mind because our focus is not about uh knowing the grammar but our focus is acquire the language whether the learners able to exposure to the language or have the opportunity to listen to the language and then give them opportunity to use the language so I think uh, the answer is, this is the subconscious mind. 
Okay. I hope that um, you are satisfied with uh, my answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, madam. For the next questions. Oh, from Mr. Ferus again to Dr. Labiran Roni. The question is uh, a native English speaker with authentic use of language but with no pedagogical traits. On the other hand, a non-native English speaker with enhanced teaching skills but average English skills. Which of those two teachers should be modeled for the students? Time is yours, sir. Well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Varus Agbaro. Uh, so sorry to make a mistake if I mispronounce your name. Um, oh, this is a nice know. question. Uh, so which one that we have to um, be a model that uh, especially for the native speaker, there is so the pedagogic trait here. There's important one that uh, I'd be focused for teaching English, especially for the student learn English as a foreign language, not as a native speaker there. Um, uh, pedagogic trait is really important, especially for uh, student live in Indonesian uh, because uh, the student have to try to collaborate about the social one. Uh, the student had to try to how to help the student to learn English and the other one. There's a really difference between a teacher who teaching English uh, as a as a native speaker there. They do not need uh, about the pedagogic one also because there's already know how to get it how to practice about the English and how to learn about the English. But and especially in Indonesia, especially in Toraja, uh, we need a pedagogical, pedagogical trait that's uh, copyright by the student. Therefore, not only the cognitive one, uh, they can uh, get it by the student, but they have to try to look for, uh, get it also about the um, affective one. Uh, they have we have we cannot try to collaborate two mind point affective and cognitive ones. So the student good uh, as a good skill in English and also good uh, uh, affective to learn English. The this one this is a really nice one. So uh, I think so. Uh, which one be a model one? Uh, I try I try to give the press that no one model uh, the good one, but. We have to explore uh, how to be a good model for the student that we want to try to teaching for the student there. So try to explore other things that you have it. Uh, therefore, you can be a successful in teaching uh, English. Thank you so much. OK, thank you so much for a great answer, sir. Well, for the next questions okay from mr ricky montano for both speaker the question is what do you consider the most challenging barriers in translating and teaching english and grammar so i invite madam dr selfie the first and then uh, the second is mr time is yours Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ricky. Um, in my point of view, the challenging barriers in translating. Okay, first let's uh, answer one by one because translating, uh, teaching English and grammar are different. So when we uh, talking about translating, of course, um, you know that when we talk about language, it's always connecting to culture. So, of course, in translating, we have to understand well um, uh, the, the, the philosophy. I mean, uh, don't try to understand in your own culture, but try to understand behind the meaning of the text. 
So, uh, of, for my point of view, the first challenging barriers is culture, and of and also um, like translating English into Indonesian. We have a very different uh, grammatical rules. Yes, uh, so also connecting to grammatical rules because like in Indonesia and English, uh, for Indonesian, we have the uh, for time, we really different uh, talking about uh, uh, English. So I think the second is uh, uh, rules. And also the challenging barriers in teaching English and grammar. Well, so again, um, in Indonesia, we have a very simple uh, grammar and rules, but in English, a very complicated grammar and rules. We have to uh, differentiate between uh, present, past, uh, future, and many more senses. So I think one of the challenging barriers is um, in teaching English, especially in teaching grammar, yes, uh, it's about uh, tenses, but uh, as my explanation in my presentation today, how people learn language, don't focus on the grammar rules, but focus on the, the input that you get first, uh, try to exposure to the language, listen for many, many times, so you will have input, then after you get some input that you are able to express your ideas through output. So I think uh, this is my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, madam. Well, uh, for the second speaker, I invite you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, this. Uh, this is a nice question also about the challenging barriers in translating and teaching English and a grammar. Um, I think this is really nice also. That's already explained by Mrs. Selfie that uh, translating is, um, especially in Indonesia, uh, there's a really difference of, in, in, uh, with in, in English. Uh, especially in English, uh, in uh, the student who learn uh, English in Indonesia, they have to try to need the three languages, namely uh, Bahasa Indonesia, Indo Indonesia, and um, Torajanese, and English. The, they do not try to get directly uh, English. They have to try to translate into mother tongues. That's, that's the main point here. Uh, especially for the student who learn English as a native speaker and a student who learn English uh, in um, a city, uh, I think that's a really easy one to get it uh, about this one. It's a really easy to um, teaching the translation uh, in a learning process. And as a bit, especially for teaching English and a grammar the and also having a challenging also, it's just a, a really hard also for teaching English and a grammar. But we have to try to make sure that we have to be enjoy other things, what, whatever is it, uh, translating and uh, teaching a grammar, uh, we have to doubt it and we have to get it because we have to learn English. That means that we can get it, other things, even though this is really hard, but we should know how to get it, uh, even though it's hard, but I believe it that uh, one day, uh, the challenges, uh, there's no barriers anymore in translating and teaching English and a grammar. That's it. Thank you. Back to the writer. Okay, thank you so much for a great answer, madam, answer. Well, for the next questions, Oh, for the next questions from Mr. Ricky Montano again to Dr. Salfi. The question is, uh, aside from using TPR, TPR, what are other resources can we use to convey learning in English and grammar? Time is yours, madam. Uh, 
Okay, so this is a challenging questions for me, I think. Um, TPR, uh, total physical response, is that right? Okay, so TPR is uh, one of the teaching method that we can use to teach. Um, uh, we help the learners to learn the language by doing directly. So we give uh, we give instructions, and the students will respond with the physical response. Um, but your question is, what other resources can we use to convey learning in English and grammar? Well, uh, other sources that we can use to uh, convey uh, in learning English and grammar, in my point of view, when I try to connect the, to language acquisition, so we have to give the context, yes, uh, help the learners to have opportunity exposure to the language. I mean, when you try to teach English, help them to, especially for uh, the young learners, because we have to teach, uh, talking about teaching, of course, uh, teaching in different age is important. When you teach children or when you teach uh, teenagers or adults, when we uh, use TPR, I think it is suitable for uh, children or elementary students. But when we teach teenagers and adults, of course, um, totally different with teaching children and teenagers and adults. In teaching teenagers, so we have to try to give activities that suitable for their age, where for teenagers, they love uh, more active learning. I mean, um, this is a time where they try to connect English with their daily activities. So when you teach English uh, for them, try to teach them uh, that's suitable with their, their age, where teenagers, they love uh, more actively participate. But for adults, yes. So you may help them uh, teaching them in the context. Yes, teaching grammar in the context. So you don't teach them, give them the rules, but try to give them uh, like a text that they have to analyze, whether it is in the past or present or future. So teach them in the context. Uh, especially for adults. So we have to teach them in different uh, techniques, of course, when we have to know our audience, whether you teach um, uh, young learners or teenagers or adults. So it depends um, on the audience. So I think that's my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, madam. Well, for the next questions from Miss Jezreel Austria. Oh, for both speakers, the question is uh, what are the ways to eliminate the language barriers in teaching English language to the students, especially to the non native English speakers? So I invite uh, Madam Dr. Selfie as the first. Time is yours. Thank you. Well, so the question is the ways to eliminate the language barriers in teaching English language to the students, especially to the non-native English speakers. So this is a problem for teacher, right? So of course, we have language barriers, yeah, especially for us as a non-native uh, English speaker. Um, the ways to eliminate the language barriers, of course, the first, uh, you have to confidence with your English. As Paroni said that we have to be a good model for our students. So teacher themselves have to try to improve uh, their speaking skills, their uh, listening skills, their, uh, yes. So the first of all, 
uh, teacher themselves should improve their English anytime. <laughs> yeah. So, so how to eliminate the language barriers? So you have to be confident with your English, and you have to put in your mind that you are a non-native speaker. Of course, you are not a perfect uh, speaker in that language. Uh, that language. Even the native speaker, they also have uh, language barriers. They still have make mistakes. So you have to put in your mind first that English is is not your mother tongue. So if you make mistakes, it's it's not uh, a big problem. I mean, as long as you try to use your language as long as you try to improve always improve your skills so i think you can help your learners to be a good speaker thank you okay thank you madam well for the second speakers time is yours thank you so much uh, this is really nice and interesting uh, question that's how to try to eliminate the language barrier in teaching English language student, especially for native speaker here. Okay, this is one one uh, important that I have already uh, explained that we have to be a good model one. Uh, good model one that can be copyrighted by the student one. If we have a good model, that means that uh, we have be self-confident to speak in English and we try to uh, make sure that uh, you can teach English well and uh, try to improve your English uh, for the student. And if you have a good model, that means that you can uh, try to influence the student, therefore the student can speak in English well. One, if the student uh, cannot speak in English, uh, this mean, that means that uh, the teacher is a successful in teaching English one. So don't worry about this one. You making sure you must push yourself that you have to show that you be a good model one. Uh, so be careful one that if you don't have any preparation or you uh, you are not sure that you not the model good model one, please don't be a teacher if you want to be a teacher you make sure that you can be a good model for the student thank you back to you okay thank you so much for a great answer madam answer well ladies and gentlemen time is your time is over well hopefully we can learn something new and we can implement for this live please review comments like and share this page and youtube channel institute global professionals so uh, i think enough thank you so much for your attention wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh stay safe stay happy and stay healthy see you next time thank you madam thank you. sir you're welcome thank you so much <laughs> okay well ladies and gentlemen for the announcement we have okay uh we can open www.eduigp.com here double bonus with regular webinar along with our regular webinars we have also added webinars on every weekend sunday morning month of october october morning session that october 24 until october 31 at 9 30, uh, 9 30 a.m bst okay for the next announcement here, triple bonus. Starting from October, we have webinar series program. You will get individual certificate 
for each webinar and after submitting all certificates you will receive a webinar series certificate and then highly focused teaching strategies research assessment pedagogy tools and techniques professional development and communication skills okay well here our sec first second third four and five webinar series program six webinar series program okay well webinar series certificates for webinar series certificate you have to must attend all the part of series Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today's certification process, please click www.eduigp.com certifications process here, step by step. Okay, the first important note, without an account on our website, you cannot visit, but you cannot do anything functionally. Okay, here important note. Well, you can join our all live programs from Facebook page, Facebook group, YouTube channel, and website. If anyone missed any program due to some unavoidable issues, still you can attend previous webinars with verified certificate. Okay, with, without an account on our website, you cannot visit everyone, uh, but you can do anything functionally. Here, today certifications process, www.eduigp.com, October 20, today's program name, Teaching English as a Foreign Language and Assessment, Part 3. Okay, certification link here, please note. And then the first certification link now available in comment box and a pinned comment. Please check it. And then certification link will be available always in this program post, Facebook page, Facebook group, YouTube, and descriptions. Okay, here, step three, browse, browser, www.eduigp.com or given link. You will redirect in this page of our website. Here, YouTube link. And then uh, click enroll now. Okay, if you are new, create your account. If you have an account, then log in directly. After that, find the seminar title and get enrolled. Important note here, without an account on our website, you can visit, but you cannot do anything functionally. Okay, instruction certificate code required today's program teaching English as a foreign language and assessment part 3 20 October the code is IGP 9595 the code is IGP 9595 Without coding, no one is eligible for certificates. So please note this code, everyone. That is important for you if you want to get certificate. Okay, with coding, click 
get your certificate. Certificate code IGP 9591-9595, sorry. And then you can click get your certificate. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the next webinar for tomorrow, it means upcoming webinar on 21 October 20 and 21 entitled developing your vision and goals with three speakers they are from pakistan south africa and bangladesh let's join guys and then upcoming webinar october 22 2021 the title is Stress Management Amidst Pandemic. With three speakers, they are from Philippines. At 6 p.m. UTC plus six. Okay, well, upcoming webinar on 23 October. 20 and 21 entitled Inspirations and Motivations to Learn New Skills with two keynote speakers. They are from Croata and Russia. Okay, for uh, upcoming webinar on 24 October. 20 and 21 entitled 21 century teaching and learning demystified at 9 30, 30 a.m. UTC plus 6 with two keynote speaker from Indonesia. Let's join everyone. Okay, well, upcoming webinar again. On 24 October 20 and 21, entitled Teaching English as a Foreign Language and Assessment, Part 4, with two Kata speakers from Indonesia also. Let's join everyone. Okay, here, upcoming webinar on 25 October 20 and 21 entitled the process to be a tvf trainer wow <laughs> from mr ronald from philippines let's join everyone okay upcoming webinar again on 26 october 20 and 21 entitled Authentic Assessment in Teaching and Learning, Part 5, with two keynote speakers from Indonesia. Okay, upcoming webinar on 27, 27 October 20, 20 and 21, entitled Innovative Ways to Teach Research in Distance Learning at 6 p.m. UTC plus 6 with two keynote speakers. Okay, well, upcoming webinar on 28 October 20 and 21. The title is International Political Economy. Wow. At 6 p.m. The keynote speaker from Philippines. Let's join everyone. Okay, upcoming webinar again, 29 October 20 and 21, entitled Work Life Balance Professionally. Okay, well, upcoming webinar 
on 30 October 20, uh, 20 and 21 entitled Different Teaching Modality at 6 p.m. UTC plus 6 with two Canada speaker from India. Let's join everyone. Okay, upcoming webinar again on 31 October 20 and 21 entitled Woman on the Web, a study of women on YouTube. Wow, the keynote speaker from India. Let's join everyone. Okay, upcoming webinar again 20. Uh, 31, sorry, 31 October 20 and 21, entitled Gamifications, the Future of Distance Learning, the Keda Speaker from Philippines. At 6 p.m. Okay. So, don't forget, everyone, if you want to get certificate, please, uh, please note this code IGP9595. Without code, no one is eligible for a certificate. Okay, with Cordy, you can claim your certificates anytime. So please note this Cordy IGP 9595. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think enough. Thank you so much for your attention. Swabilahi Taufiq wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And see you next time.